This is Mary with the Conservation District. I'm here with Brandon Uber with his Huber with his corpse plant. Brandon, tell us what you got here. Hello everyone, welcome. Um, so yeah, this is the corpse flower. It's uh, the more it's botanically known as Amorphothallus titanum. It's the world's largest flowering species that exists on the planet. And uh, this particular plant is very famous for its giant blooms. Uh, smelly flower. This plant right now smells like a like a like roadkill, and it, it does that to draw in pollinators. Uh, that that it'll draw flies and carry on beetles, which is really interesting because you know we think of flowers being pollinated by things like bees and whatnot, but this plant is pollinated by flies. So this is an active stench, and it also produces heat. So it draws these pollinators with its smell and its heat, and um, this bloom event takes. This plant I've been growing for 13 years now, and it can take 10 to 15 years to bloom its first time. So this is actually, um, this plant is now 21 years old. Uh, I got it when it was about 10 or so years old. Uh, and this thing has bloomed, um, reoccurred, and once they're mature, they can rebloom every three to five years. So this this is its fourth flower, actually. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to have this blooming uh, here at the house uh, at, you know, right here locally in St. Matthews and, and in my, you know, greenhouse, which I just built. Um, so this, this, we, we finished the greenhouse and got this thing in here, um, right before the buds started to develop. And so when these plants are getting ready to flower, they develop very fast. They'll grow five, six inches per day as they develop quickly into this flower. And last night, this open, this was fully open around 9 PM. Uh, they, they open when the sun sets and the, the moon starts to come out. And um, they they said they're they're they have all these pollinators come out at nighttime, and um, and it'll it'll stay open for probably about 24 hours at most. By later tonight, this will start to wither, uh, it start to shrivel up a little bit. The weather today has been really great. Uh, it's kind of cool, overcast, and that'll keep this flower alive a little longer. But um, yeah, where'd you, where'd you get it? Oh yeah, so this this one came from the Huntington Botanical Garden. Uh, many, you know, over 10 years ago. In California? A, yeah, in California as a small bulb. And then it was a small bulb about the, about this big. And uh, so this plant has a tuber on the ground. It's a bulb plant. Think of like a giant potato. And this, the uh, as the bulb gets bigger and bigger, it builds up energy in that tuber. And once it's mature enough, it'll, it, it spends energy to make this flower. Uh, during the leaf, during its non-flower stage, it has this leaf that looks like a giant palm tree. Basically, there's there's some plants around me um, right there that are exactly it. Well, a small version of it, um, and so it has this it has this it has this leaf. Um, I could even show you the poster here. Yeah. Um, we'll take a look. So this. This poster okay. does a really good job in explaining the life cycle of this plant. So we're looking at a flower right here. And if the flower is pollinated, it produces this fruit. And the fruit produces seeds, which then become seedlings. And the seedlings grow in this little plant, which if we think of this plant as kind of like a perennial, every year this plant grows a new leaf. It gets a leaf bigger and bigger and bigger until it's this giant leaf that you know is shown here about eight foot tall. Now, the lupin's leaf is what has been 10 foot tall uh, prior to this flower. And everything above ground is temporary and goes back to this tuber. This bulb is a stored energy. Everything above ground, it looks like a tree when it's in leaf, but it's really just this fleshy plant leaf. And uh, it goes away. And then, so it never flowers with a leaf. It always just has a leaf or a flower in between these dormancy stages. And once the bulb is big enough, it then goes into this flower stage and the flower quickly develops from this little shoot to this full full bloom um, flower right here. And then it, it opens up and it opens up just for, you know, 24 hours or so. And there's actually a small, I have a small, oops, sorry. I have a small plant of it to kind of show. This is the same species. And this is a, I this, that was this is a two to three year old plant. And, okay. and so you can kind of see the resemblance from the spots. Now this plant will take another five to seven years probably to flower. Um, but it's got to grow many, many years before it gets to this size. And there's actually, uh, there's a couple others. Um, this is another one, same species. It's just a young one that we propagated from it. And then 
This plant belongs to a, a really interesting plant family. Amorphothallus have about 200 species, and this one's blooming right now as well. Um, this is another species from a nearby country. These all grow in Southeast Asia most of the time, so very tropical. Uh, this one's from Indonesia. Um, and most of the species, you know, Philippines, Thailand, Laos, and so on. Um, but you can see the same mechanism here. You have the spadex, this tall thing. The spathe is this, this hooded structure. And, and they open for a very short time. Now, this, this is as big as this plant gets. Um, so you can imagine the diversity across this genus. And then we also had, this is another species. This is a Morphothallus albus, which is a, you know, a, a small, another small species. Uh, we, we also have, and I grow, I probably have about 40, 50 different species of these plants. I, I, I enjoy growing these plants a lot because they're just some of the coolest, craziest plants. This one is a, a species called Impressus. And with, you can see that the leaves are growing and the flower are growing this one. That's because this one has some offsets. It's actually producing offsets and babies attached to it. So um, some of these species propagate by uh, uh, this, this, they'll multiply, they'll have pups, uh, offsets, like a lot of perennial plants do. But titanium does not offset at all. It only is seed grown. So it's a very, um, it's very rare to see these in flower. Even in the wild, they, they require two of these blooms to happen at the same time in order to get seeds from it. So they, they're, 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 their numbers in the wild are limited. Um, you know, very specific habitat they need and very specific uh, cycle that they follow. Uh, we all, and then this was one other that was blooming about two days ago. And this one smelled really bad. This is Paeonifolius. Um, you can kind of see that, and, and it's faded now, so we can kind of look in there. And you can see this is, this is where the pollen, this is the pollen right here. And so the same structure exists down in that titanium. And uh, here's the, um, this is, these are the, the female, uh, things that pr will produce seeds if it's pollinated. So you can kind of see the resemblance. So they vary in size, color, height, and so on, but same kind of mechanism. And they all tend to smell like a roadkill or a corpse uh, as their pollination me mechanism. So you're not gonna bring this into your house at night? No, no. no. <laughs> Plus it's, it's a, little, a little big for that yeah. too. Well, but, how, how long will this corpse plant live? The, the plant itself or the flower? Both. Oh, well, so the flower, the flower will probably be open to the end of tonight, and then uh, it'll start to, sh it, by this evening even, it'll probably start to wilt and start to shrivel back up. And, you know, in two, three days, this will fall over and decline and begin to shrivel up. And, and before you know it, it'll, it'll dry up just like this, this brown thing here. It'll shrivel up, and then I'll be removing it. And it'll be, it'll be just, and then the bulb will, lit, will continue on I'm below the ground. And then that bulb will generate that leaf again. And then that leaf will grow and it'll be all the way into the ceiling. And, and then it'll do its thing. It'll be photosynthetic. It'll grow, it's, it'll store, and it'll build up energy again until it can flower again next time. And so this will, this will in about a month's time, this will be completely, this will have completely withered away. And then in about maybe one to two months, we'll start to see some shoots coming up, a one shoot come up that will be this big, plant that it is that it, it becomes and so it's very interesting cycle that this plant follows it, it everything everything above ground is just fleshy and temporary and it'll go away and it'll it'll turn over this next form its leaf form and then it'll go back to flower form and and it'll take these dormancy periods it'll rest and sleep in between these stages so um very strange plant for sure. Well, well, thanks for having us. Um, nope. Hard to believe this is in St. Matthews. And if somebody wants to ask you any questions, do you have an email that they might? Yeah, shoot you to? Ab absolutely. Yeah, they can. They can. You know, they can find me on Facebook, or they, you know, my uh, email address is is B is in Brandon, and then uh, my last name is Huber H U B E R, but my email is B H U B, and then eighty nine at gmail dot com. Um, and, but certainly if I'll, I'll see the post and if you just tag me on Facebook, I'll, if you want to come out and see it, please do. It's a short, it's a rare opportunity right in our backyard and a very short window to see it. You know, probably, you could probably see it throughout today, maybe a little bit tomorrow, but after that, this thing will fall over and it'll be done its thing and onto its next stage. So, so, so we have to ask before we let you go. How are the watermelon doing? Y'all remember Brandon showed us his watermelons last year, his 250 pound 
plus watermelons. So yeah. how are the watermelons doing so far this year? They're good. They're, the plants look, the plants are in, plants look better than they did this time last year. They're out there in the field. There's no fruit out yet. I'm building the plant. Uh, we could even take a walk out there if you wanted uh, later. Sure. Um, but uh, they're, the plants are plants are looking great. There's nothing, no fruit yet. We're building the plant before we start to build that fruit. Okay. And well, so they're okay. looking, they're looking great. We're excited to see. You know, I usually set a fruit, a watermelon out about like the end of June or early July, and then from there we just grow the fruit. So we'll, we'll keep us posted on the watermelon. Yeah, absolutely. And any other interesting plants, we for sure. always like to see them. Thank you awesome. for having us, Brandon. All right, Good thanks, luck. Mary. Thank you. Yeah.